The second cripple I'm going to tie tonight is a Quigley style cripple Calabatus. Um, this probably is my number one producer on our area lakes. It just catches fish. Um, I tie this again with a biot. It's got a trailing shuck. Um, it's got uh, a wing out front that's out of deer hair. Once again, on this particular pattern, I'm using my whiting uh, dry fly saddle in a grizzly dun, um, which just works super for it. I like to typically undersize the hackle on my cripples so they float just a touch lower in the water. And, uh, and so that is our little Calabatus Quigley style cripple that I like a lot that will tie. So the next cripple pattern I'm tying is our Quigley style cripple. Day in and day out during a Calabatus mayfly hatch, I'll tell you this is probably my number one producer. Um, it is really a good pattern. Uh, I had uh, Tom Ski and uh, his significant other Sherry up to Eastlake last year. Tom is our whiting protein manager and uh, we had a ball catching rainbows on this little Quigley style cripple pattern. You know, I'll, I'll kind of rush through some of the early steps because it's tied very similar to what I just did. I'm going to tie in my biot. By the way, I don't know if you've noticed on the on the film, I am always carrying my uh, scissors in my hand all the time. That doesn't show up real well on the video, but I keep my scissors in my hand all the time as I'm tying. It's one of the tools that you use most often in tying flies, and you become a lot more efficient by keeping your scissors in your hand as you're tying. It's one of the things I learned very early on in my tying career and I became a, a pretty good commercial tire over time um, and it's not because I tie fast it's because I tie efficiently and there's a big difference um, I've seen people who tie really fast and I can't keep up with them but I've seen people who don't tie efficiently really spin their wheels in tying or pushing out a dozen flies at a session. And so tying efficiently is an important part of fly tying. It's having all your materials uh, located in one particular area so you're not hunting and pecking for them each time. Um, and it's keeping your tools always in the same place on your uh, tying table so you can find them quickly as you're getting ready to, to tie a given pattern. So, all right, pretty much imitated what we did to date. Um, however, I'm going to move on and tie this in a Quigley style cripple. And in order to do that, I'm going to use some whitetail deer for the wing on this pattern. As I clean this hair, I've probably thrown away about half of it because I just want to work with the tips. The, all the under fur we want to get rid of and eliminate from the hair. And so if I do a good job, I'm going to have a nice wing emerge out of my stacker. So I've stacked that hair. I've chosen out just a, a fairly trim bunch. And as always, I got one broken tip. And I'm not going to fight it. So I'm just going to go ahead and tie that in right behind the head area on this fly. And then I'm going to wind backward. If that rolled a little bit, I can roll it back. 
I'm going to wind backwards back to the thorax area and you'll note I haven't let go. Um, I went ahead and, and trimmed that off to give me that nice um, nice little platform in between the um, or where I'm going to lay the hackle in on this pattern. Now I like to undersize the hackle on this style of cripple. Um, if anything, I'm going with a size 16, maybe a, a little bit smaller than a 14, which is the size I'm tying on. And I'm going to go ahead and set that in, um, or tie that in right on that flat spot. Now, before I get started with this hackle, just, uh, a moment on hackle prep. Can you all see how I've prepped that hackle? I've uh, stripped some of the barbs off the stem and I've stripped some more off the bottom of that stem. And those are the very first, that's the very first portion of the hackle that's going to lay on this fly. Well, very often those barbs don't quite know where to lay right. And so I'm going to head off an issue, and I'm going to go ahead and just eliminate those or trim those out. Now I'm going to wind this right over that flat area. And you notice I'm always winding at 90 degrees to the hook shank. If you wind at an angle to the hook shank, you're going to go ahead and roll that hackle. And you're... Uh, your hackle barbs will go cattywampus. So I'm going to wind that forward. I'm going to jump in front of that wing with my stem and tie that off with a couple of wraps. And then I'll reach in here and whip finish. So if I do a really good job, I won't catch any barbs, or if I do, I see one or two I caught, and we'll do a second whip finish right there in front of the wing, and in front of the wing does a couple things for me. It helps set that wing up right um, just a bit. The broken tip is going to drive me crazy. Oh well, can't do too much about it now. Um, so in any event, that's our Quigley style cripple. And I missed cutting off a couple of barbs here. So let me clean that up. And I'll spin that around in the vise so you can see all sides of this Quigley style cripple. This is probably my number one uh, pattern for Calabatus during the hatch period. Really a good one. The next video in our series is on the parachute, so tune in to that video next. Thanks for watching.